네, 안녕하십니까. 여기 좀 특별한 장소에서 특별한 분을 모시고 오늘 굉장히 어려운 어, 진행을 맡게 되었습니다. 지금 여기 안 계신 두 분한테는 이게 무슨 일인지 아직 설명을 못 해가지고 난감한데요. 차후에 이제 용서를 구하는 걸로 하고 일단 진행을 해보도록 하겠습니다. 우영훈 원장님하고 박아름 원장님을 모셨는데요. 각자 두분 자기 소개를 좀 부탁드려도 되겠습니까? 네. 안녕하세요. 저는 분당에 있는 더 아름다운 치과 대표원장 박아름입니다. 아직 개원 초년차라서 부족한 게 많아서 그이 자리를 통해서 조금 더 발전하고 싶어서 이 자리에 나왔습니다. 잘 부탁드립니다. 안녕하세요. 저는 저번에 시성기 모임 때문에 한번 모여서 제 개원 필요한 것들을 좀 나눠보자고자 이곳에 모였는데 시성기 잘 부탁드리고요. 저희 이름은 우영훈 원장입니다. 네, 지금 그두 분의 소개를 들었는데 오늘 여기 이 자리에 왜 어, 모였는지 또 소개를 좀 부탁드려도 될까요? 네. 특별하게 지금 아이콘이라는 것을 개발하신 분이 직접 오셔서 그거에 대해서 이제 소개를 하고 강의를 좀 해주신다고 하셨거든요. 그래서 그거를 좀 들어보고 많은 것을 배우고 싶어서 이쪽에 왔습니다. 지금 이 뒤에 배경이 스위스의 베른 대학인데요. 이 베른 대학의 학장님이십니다. 그리고 학장님이 직접 아이콘을 개발하셨다고 하는데요. 네, 소개를 좀 부탁드려도 될까요? Hello everybody. I'm very happy to be with you here in Korean Dental TV. So very new experience for me, and I'm very happy. I'm glad that you joined me today. Thank you. And um, I prepared a slide, maybe you can see. So here, the dental school in Bern is about 100 years uh, wow. old now. Mm -hmm. And uh, originally I'm not coming from Switzerland, where Bern is the capital. I come from Germany. And, uh, there I had some places at universities. In the end, I ended up at the Bern um, University Dental School and I'm head of the department of restorative, operative and pediatric dentists and also the executive director of the dental school. 그러면 지금 몇 가지 질문을 저희가 준비를 했는데요. 질문을 좀 먼저 부탁드려도 될까요? I heard this is your first time. So what brings you here? Yeah, it, I had the idea to visit some of our uh, friendship universities mm -hmm. and one is the a dental school uh, of the Seoul National University, mm, to wow. say it correctly. Mm -hmm. And we have a memorandum of understanding. That means that we share uh, research and we have a researcher from Seoul uh, since two years uh, in Bern. And we also want to exchange students in the future so that we will learn from each other. Wow, that's great. And I also have a few friends uh, who graduate from uh, in Germany. So I'm just curious, how many Koreans go to dental school in uh, Switzerland or Germany? Uh, actually, it's very hard to go for any foreigner to mm. uh, Germany or to Seoul because of the language. Yeah, you have to speak uh, very fluent German uh, to advise your patients and to talk to them. So this is the main obstacle why mm. we don't have foreign students at all, also oh, wow. not from other countries. Mm. Okay, so I mean, usually in Korea, we have like two years of basic science and four years of dentistry, right? And in the States, like four years of, you know, you know, pre-med, and then you go to dental school afterwards. How about, you know, can you explain the, uh, you know, academic system in Bern or Germany or Switzerland? Yeah, you finish some kind of high school when you're 18, mm -hmm. so after 12 years of regular school, and then you go to the uh, medical part, you can say, of the faculty, and you learn the basics in the medicine disciplines, and then you go three years to the dental school. Oh, so it's like four years of college, and then you go to, you know, two more years or three more years afterwards? No, it's four, two, and three. Oh, so four, two, and three. Like, okay. Like All right. That, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. All right. What is the proportion of like specialists among all dentists in Germany or Switzerland? Actually, we don't focus so much on specialization because we think that family dentistry is the thing we should have. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. when you come to the main subjects of dentistry, it's not so many specialists. We oh. try to be as broad as we can. Yeah, just like in Korea, I mean, here, I mean, we have many specialists, but um, I mean, main focus of it, and people try to get like comprehensive dentistry, so they focus on everything, basically. Hmm. And this might be a last question, so it might be a sensitive question. So what is the average income of a dentist <laughs> in okay. Switzerland? Good question, good question. Yeah. <laughs> so when, I, when I give the correct answer, you will all come to Switzerland. Maybe. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, maybe it's the, when you really work full time, uh -huh. uh, 40 hours, uh, uh -huh. maybe 36 on the patient, yeah, then mm -hmm. maybe you earn like uh, 300,000 mm. dollars, wow. okay. something like that. 
that a year. So, I mean, you said about 300,000 for each, you know, like full-time dentist, right? Mm -hmm. in, in Germany and in Switzerland Germany. as well, right? No, not in Germany. <laughs> it's, it's a Germany. lot less in Germany. Germany is half. Uh, oh, okay. Half okay. Yeah. Only in Switzerland. Yeah. Okay, so I hear about, you know, I'll say the range is like, you know, so... Yeah, that's yeah, the same. Exactly, that's so the same. about the same, I say, you know, some mm. people get like 150,000 mm. each year or sometimes mm. a lot more, 300,000, you know, all depending on, you know, mm. what kind of practice you have. 네, 지금까지 본인 소개와 여기 오신 목적에 대한 얘기를 들어봤는데요. 제대로 된그 강의를 이제 시작해 보도록 하겠습니다. <웃음> Okay, so I prepared some uh, preparation, uh, some slides about caries infiltration. So I will a little bit start with basic, just that everybody who is not so familiar with the technique gets into it, maybe. So the title uh, is Do You Still Drill and Fill? So, mm. of course, drilling and filling, you see an old case of mine, mm. yeah, so there was a lesion into dentin on the x-ray, but uh, I drilled, because mm. this is what we were taught mm -hmm. 20 years ago. Exactly. I did it minimal invasive, it looked good in the beginning, and I have an x-ray after 21 years, mm. it, it works, of mm. course it works. Mm -hmm. But you see how much I destroyed, mm -hmm. yeah? how much sound tissue was mm -hmm. destroyed, and nowadays this would be a classical infiltration case. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. And uh, with every new filling or the first filling, we start a death spiral of the tooth. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the best option to do so is to delay the first invasive intervention. And some dentists still think that this wait and see attitude is harmful. Yeah? But we know for many, many years that a sound surface to an E2, so or X-ray into inner enamel takes six years. Six years, we can wait, nothing mm -hmm. is going on. Then we see the lesion for the first time. Then we see it, then it takes another five years. So that's more than 10 years where we can do something else than drilling. Mm -hmm. And even when it's a lesion that is maybe into dentin already, it takes three years. And then another point is that many dentists still think that it's some kind of infection occurring with caries. But that's not what we think, not, not any of the uh, cariologists. It's more like this frog in the lake. He likes it. It's dirty, he likes it. <laughs> no problem. It gets a problem when you put oil into his lake, mm. then the frog is dead. The same with the tooth and the plaque. Mm -hmm. yeah, as long as there is no sugar around, the plug is healthy and the tooth is healthy. So it's more like an ecological catastrophe occurring mm -hmm. with the frog or with the tooth. It's very important to understand because when we go on uh, with fighting against uh, bacteria, we do a total other dentistry. We want to drill and fill and so on. Okay, so I come to the main part. So heal and seal is uh, what we do nowadays, not drill and fill. And one term we introduced 15 years ago is microinvasive. I will just briefly explain what we mean. And then we come to the two main fields of caries infiltration. One is the proximal area to hamper the caries progression, to stop the caries progression. And the second one is the masking effect that many dentists and patients are interested in. And I know you have done that also. <laughs> so heal and seal, microinvasive treatment. Just to say that clearly, there has never ever been described a remineralization going deep. Never. There's no scientific paper. What you can expect with any of the techniques you see is just a remin of the first 100 micrometer. Mm -hmm. So this is all we can do by remin. Of course, when we have success mm -hmm. and it works, wonderful. That's yeah? Yeah. But we know not in every patient it will work. Then we thought about, okay, we have non-invasive options, the remin, yeah? so we can fight against the, the bad diet. This is very difficult sometimes because the patients don't want to change their behavior. We can change their behavior according to modification of a biofilm, so maybe it's the oral hygiene that is uh, supported or uh, improved. Then we can apply some fluorides or maybe some modern products that will enhance the mineralization. So we have some non-invasive options where we don't have to destroy any enamel or dentin. On the other hand, we have caries excavation restoration, so the minimal invasive options. But there was always something in the middle and that was placing a plastic on the tooth, mm -hmm. the fissure sealant. And we thought, why not give it another name? Yeah, it was always in this preventive edge, so mm -hmm. uh, prevention only. No, it is something very special you do with a fissure sealant. And the same goes with 
proximal infiltration where you have a microinvasive treatment. You need to do something with the surface first and then you have a new plastic surface, so to say, of the masking of the lesions. So here you need to combine the techniques. So you have the microinvasive part, you can do also non-invasive things like bleaching and sometimes you need a filling on top, particularly in MIH. So here to sum it up, so the main indication maybe is again the caries in the aesthetic area, but also fluorosis in some countries plays a lot bigger role. And in the end I will also talk about MIH in the aesthetic area. Just a short explanation why infiltration works. Um, normally we have in sound surface uh, no light scattering. So the light is coming, going through the enamel and then it's scattered in the dentin. And you can describe that physically by the so-called refractive index of the enamel. And that's just a number that is given 1.62. And if you have a lesion, you don't have 1.62 because here you have a mixture of enamel, air and water. So this refractive index might be 1.4 for example. And what our eyes see is just the contrast between the 1.6 and the 1.4. So now when I change the contrast by infiltration up to 1.57 for example, because the infiltrant has a higher mm -hmm. refractive index, then it is not as big as it was before. Okay, cases. So this is um, a very old case because here you can still s see many things that we didn't do so well in the beginning. So a clinical, uh, typical post ortho case, a little bit yellow, but not so big lesions. Cleaning is always fine. Then we used in these days a lot of this liquid rubber dam I don't like. Then you etch mostly all of the surface. It makes in these aesthetic cases, in many cases, this more sense to etch overall. Then you rinse it off, dry it again. Then we, the ethanol again drying and then it looks like that. And what is the most prominent? What is most important you see here? White spot. Yeah, it's white. Yeah. It's white. And that's very important. If you have any yellow area, you have to again etch it maybe mm -hmm. or bleach it. Mm -hmm. So we, you can't infiltrate a little bit yellowish areas. When you mm -hmm. do that, you will see later you will have it ugly. Mm -hmm. yeah? So it must be as white as here. Mm -hmm. Okay, then the infiltration, just the normal steps as I've shown for the proximal, so nothing special in this case here. And it looked good. Yeah, of course, you, it's not making a veneer. You sometimes have some little uh, whitish appearances, but wait a little bit. After one week, the small things will be gone. But what was not so perfect was this area. And here, as I said, I would have prolonged my infiltration time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I didn't know it these days. Before, and after, That's still better. very good, yeah, yeah. here you have it side by side. So it's really a case you should start with, a post-author case. What made you invent this new product? The hold from the very, very first start until it was a product, maybe it was the